Dear friends and family in Christ, Merry Christmas to you. May the joy of this evening, may the joy of each day come from our Savior, Christ the Lord. Amen. One of the things that I really enjoy about Christmas, and I know that many of you enjoy about Christmas, is the opportunity that we have to sing Christmas songs together. The songs that we know by heart, or at least we know the first verse, and we can do a pretty decent job of filling in the next couple of verses as we're baking cookies or riding around in our car. We enjoy singing the hymns, even if it's the same hymns we sing year after year. We enjoy singing songs, not just Christmas hymns, but songs like Jingle Bells or Frosty the Snowman or I'm Dreaming of a White Christmas, maybe not here in the valley, probably not. Maybe there's another one that some of you sing as well. I'll be home for Christmas. Probably, maybe right now, going through your mind is Bing Crosby as he sang it in 1943 for the first, excuse me, for the first time. As he sang those words, I'll be home for Christmas. I don't know if you knew this, but it was actually sang, sung from the perspective of a World War II soldier. He was singing those words as if a soldier hoping to return from the lines of battle to be home with his family. I don't know if you knew that or not, especially it's sad when you think about that last line of the song, isn't it? I'll be home for Christmas, and then, if only in my dreams. Kind of a sad song, isn't it? We like that idea of being home. There's just something comfortable about being home. It doesn't have to be in a big house or a small house. It doesn't have to even be in a house. Our home is it's that comfortable place where maybe it's with our family. Maybe it's, the, it's the, where that old couch was that mom and dad always had there. Home is that comfortable place where we can get away for just a little bit. That place where we can, maybe for a few hours, maybe for a few days, put those things that are going on in our lives outside and leave those outside and enjoy some time with our loved ones. Maybe it's the, the, something about home, it's the idea of, Having mama's cooking, or papa's, depending on who cooks in your house, or having a chance to cook for everybody in your family. There's just something comfortable about being home, isn't there? It's interesting because tonight we actually celebrate the fact that Jesus left his home. Tonight we celebrate the fact that he left his home in heaven, the throne of grace. He left the place where, well, Angels surrounded him, where all of creation praised him. Listen to the way John describes it. I know we usually don't read from, uh, from Revelation on Christmas Eve, but listen to what Jesus left to come be here on earth. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive the power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and the sea and all that is in them singing. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. What you don't see right before that is there's myriads upon myriads, thousands upon thousands of angels praising Christ Jesus. And he descended here to this earth. He came, the God of all creation, through the womb of Mary, came as a fragile as a frail child, came to a world that didn't necessarily want him. I mean, if we think about it, we all remember and we talk about the fact that he was born in a manger. Now, we call it a manger, I think, because it makes us more comfortable. But for those of you who have been on a farm, you know that he was born in the feeding trough. It's not quite as delicate that way, is it? He left heaven where myriad upon myriad of angels praised him to come to earth, to a feeding trough. He did so for you. Jesus came to this earth for you. He came to this earth because he knew your need for salvation. He came to this earth to restore you and to restore all of creation, to rescue you from sin and death and from the power of the devil. What we celebrate on Christmas, the incarnation, the infleshment, Jesus taking on human flesh, is Him coming into the world to pay for every one of our sins, to give His life for us. Centuries ago, Martin Luther wrote a hymn that's actually in our hymnal, From Heaven Above to Earth I Come. Now the reason we 
usually don't sing it on Christmas is because if you turn to that hymn, you'll realize it's 15 verses long. And I wanted you all to come back. Well, the 13th verse is one that has stuck out in my mind always. Maybe it's because from the time I was little, we always sang this verse. Maybe it's because of the joy that I have as I think of this verse. 13th verse is, Ah, dearest Jesus, holy child, make thee a bed, soft, undefiled, within my heart that it may be a quiet chamber kept for thee. It's almost as if we're praying, inviting the Lord Jesus to come dwell within our hearts, to make his home within our hearts, to come dwell in our lives, to live with us. It's easy to sing those words on Christmas Eve, though, isn't it? It's easy when we're in the midst of God's house, in the midst of singing these Christmas hymns, to sing those words. It's much harder when we get back to regular life, our normal lives. It's much harder when we get back to lives that are busy and bustling and lives that are full of other things. Jobs that we need to pay for all the Christmas presents we bought or at least pay down the credit card on which we put them. Family get-togethers, dinners that have to be planned, doctor's appointments that we have to go to, and all these things start to add up. And so we push Christ to the side. Yeah, he's in our hearts. That's why we're here. We push him down, though, well, in that big garage. When I was growing up, we, we had these basements, and some of you who have moved here from other places had basements as well. And that's where we would store everything. We'd put everything, uh, our Christmas decorations, we'd put all, all of our boxes for moving, uh, our clothes if we outgrew them, if they were going to Salvation Army, extra food if we had it. Here in the Southern California, we don't have basements, so we put everything in their gr our garages. If you're like me, you probably don't have space for your car and maybe haven't had space since 2002. No one's judging. But that's kind of how things go with Christ. We say, Christ, make your home in your, our hearts. But then things go, come up. Life comes up. And so we shift him to the garage. We put him away like we put away all our decorations. Maybe every now and again we have a little nostalgia. And we say to ourselves, oh, I should probably bring him out. Maybe go dust them off a little bit. But we're too busy. Well, at least until we need something. Then we go out to the garage and we, and we come to him and with all those things that we are on our hearts and on our minds, we pull them back out and we ask him why. Well, why didn't you help me here? And you fill in the blanks. Why didn't you fix this? And our list goes on and we pull them out to demand those questions. But that's not, that, that's not how our home should be for Christ. Christ is meant to dwell in our hearts each and every day. He has come down to this world in his great love for us. He has come down to this world to be with us every day. And even when we push him down, even when we push him out, he is still here. He is still pursuing us, coming after each one of you. Because that is why he came into this world. Not only to rescue you from your sins, but to rescue you from the pain and the brokenness of a broken family. To rescue you from the pain and brokenness of a relationship that has gone wrong. To rescue you from the hurts of this life where sin abounds. And to show you that he has a greater plan. He has a greater plan for you. Because his home for you is not here on this earth. But he's even now preparing a place that you might be with him forever. A heavenly home. For that is why he came into the world. So that he could conquer sin, conquer death, and conquer the devil. He could come into this nasty, awful life and show us the hope and promise, the light of salvation, to point us to true hope in knowing that he is preparing a place better for us. A place with Him where there will be no more tears and no more pain, no more hunger and no more thirst, no more sadness and no more fear, but only the joy of being in His presence. A heavenly
heavenly home for us. So as you come together on this Christmas Eve, as we sing the hymns, maybe you'll think of the Bing Crosby, I'll be home for Christmas. But I hope you do also pray. Ah, dearest Jesus, holy child, make thee a bed soft, undefiled, within my heart that it may be a quiet chamber kept for thee. Amen. Please bow your heads with me. Lord Jesus, we do thank and praise you for entering into our world, for leaving your throne of grace, to enter into our broken lives and our broken families and uh, and to give us hope, to rescue us and to give us the promise of a greater home, a place where there will be, be no more pain, but only the joy of being with you. Help us to each day know your presence with us. Help us each day to live with the purpose that we are your children. Help us each day to know your great love for us. For it is your love that brought you from your throne of grace into a manger, a feeding trough, that brought you to the cross to pay for our sins, that brought you through that you might rise so that one day we too would rise with you and that we would one day be home. Help us to open our hearts and our lives that you may dwell with us always. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Merry Christmas to each of you.